When we solve equations with numbers, like the equation 3 times x equals 4, we divide both sides by 3. Or equivalently, we multiply both sides by 1 third. The number 1 third is called the multiplicative inverse of 3. It's also written as 3 to the minus 1. When we multiply 3 inverse by 3, we get 1, which is why it's so useful for solving equations like this one. If we can find a multiplicative inverse for a matrix, that could give us a good way to solve matrix equations, like a times x equals b, where a, x, and b are matrices, a and b matrices that we know the entries of, and x a matrix we want to find. Recall the matrix I, called the identity matrix, that has ones down the diagonal and zeros in all its other places. The identity matrix is a square matrix, and there's actually one for each dimension n. So for example, I3 is a three by three matrix that has three ones down a diagonal and zero as all its other entries. The matrix I plays the role of the number one for matrix multiplication. Just like one times any number just gives you the same number itself, if you multiply I by any matrix, you just get the matrix you started with. And it works if you multiply in the other direction too. So by analogy to numbers, the inverse for a matrix A would be a matrix A inverse that multiplies by A to give the identity. It turns out that such a matrix doesn't always exist for every matrix A, but when it does, it's super useful. Let's start with the definition of an inverse matrix. Suppose that A is an n by n square matrix and B is another n by n matrix so that when you multiply A and B together, in either order, you get the identity matrix. Then A is called invertible, and B is called the inverse of A. And this can be denoted A to the negative one. We're focusing our attention on matrix A in this definition, but in this situation, B is also called invertible, and A is gonna be the inverse of B. We'll only talk about inverses for square matrices. And in fact, it turns out that it's not possible for our pairs of matrices to satisfy both these two conditions if they're not square. You might be wondering, is it possible to have A times B be the identity matrix, but not B times A? We've certainly seen that in some cases, the product A times B is not the same as the product B times A. Matrix multiplication is not, in general, commutative. But it turns out, although I won't prove it here, that if A and B are square matrices, such that A times B is the identity, then B times A will also necessarily have to be the identity. So the answer, is it possible to have the product one way be the identity but not the other way? The answer is no, this is not possible. You might also wonder, is it possible to have two different matrices B and C that are both inverses for A? In other words, could we have A times B equals I, B times A equals I, and also have A times C equals I, and C times A equals I? Well, suppose I were in this situation, and I took the equation A times B equals I, and I multiplied on the left by C. Since C times A is the identity, this is the identity right here, so this, can be, this equation can be rewritten as i times b equals c times i, but the identity times b is just b, and c times the identity is c, so in fact, b would have to equal c. So the answer is no. It's not possible to have two different matrices b and c that are both inverses for a. They would end up having to be the same thing. Another question that comes to mind is, does every square matrix have an inverse? The answer to this question is also no. For example, let's consider the two by two square matrix, one, two, two, four. Suppose we found a matrix, I'll write its entries as A, B, C, D, so that when we multiplied together, we got the identity matrix. If I work out the matrix multiplication, I get these entries on the left, having to equal the identity matrix on the right. But that means I need a plus 2c to equal 1, 
and 2a plus 4c to equal 0. If I take twice the first equation and subtract the second equation, I get 0 equals 2, which is a contradiction. So there are no values of a, b, c, and d that would work. There's no inverse to this matrix. If we want to find an inverse matrix for a matrix like this one, that's the same as finding a matrix x such that a times x is the identity matrix. In this case, a 3 by 3 identity matrix. That's all we have to do because we've seen that if the multiplication this way is the identity, then the multiplication in the other direction, x times a, has to also equal the identity. But we've seen how to solve matrix equations like this before. We can do that by writing down the matrix A and augmenting it with the matrix on the right side of the equation, in this case, the identity matrix. If we're able to convert this matrix to reduce row echelon form, and it works out that the chunk in this part of the augmented matrix turns into the identity matrix, then we'll be able to read off the solution for X in this chunk of the matrix. So let's do some row reducing. I'll swap the first two rows, use the first row to get rid of the 4 in the third row, get rid of the negative 3 in this position, and continue. Notice that our row reduced matrix has the identity matrix as a block where the original matrix A used to be. Therefore, we have a solution X that we can read off from the rightmost block of our row reduced matrix. That solution is the inverse of A. And we can check our work by multiplying this matrix by A in either direction and verifying that we get the identity matrix. I want to mention that if we had not gotten the identity matrix as our left-hand chunk after doing row reducing, if we had, for example, gotten a row of zeros here, then there would not exist an inverse to our matrix A. Now that we've found the inverse matrix for A, notice that this matrix A is the same matrix as was on this previous slide. Now that we've found its inverse, we have an easy way to solve the equation A times X equals B. All we have to do is multiply both sides of that equation on the left by A inverse. A inverse times A is the identity matrix and the identity matrix times the matrix X just gives X. So the unknown matrix X will be given by A inverse times B. I'll copy A inverse from the previous page and multiply it by the matrix B. After some arithmetic, this works out to the following 3 by 2 matrix. In this video, we define the inverse of a square matrix as the matrix that you multiply it by to get the identity matrix. We also computed the inverse of a matrix by sticking the matrix and the identity matrix together and converting this to reduce row echelon form. Finally, once we had the inverse of a matrix A, we used it to solve an equation of the form AX equals B by multiplying both sides by A inverse.